Hi everybody. I'm going to start the next chapter of Ivan, the one and only, and it's called A Plan. It's been two days since anyone's come to visit. Mac is in a bad mood. He says we're losing money hand over fist. He says he's going to sell the whole lot of us. When Thelma, a blue and yellow macaw, demands, kiss me, big boy, for the third time in ten minutes, Mac throws a soda can at her. Thelma's wings are clipped so she can't fly, but she can still hop. She leaps aside just in the nick of time. Mac stomps to his office and slams the door shut. I wonder if my visitors have grown tired of me. Maybe if I learn a trick or two, it would help. Humans do seem to enjoy watching me eat. Luckily, I'm always hungry. I'm a gifted eater. A silverback must eat 45 pounds of food a day if he wants to stay a silverback. 45 pounds of fruit and leaves and seeds and stems and bark and vines and rotten wood. I also enjoy the occasional insect. I'm going to try to eat more. Maybe then we will get more visitors. Tomorrow I'll eat 50 pounds of food. Maybe 55. That should make Mac hungry or happy. I explain my plan to Bob. Ivan, he says, trust me on this one. The problem is not your appetite. He hops onto my chest and licks my chin, checking for leftovers. Bob is a stray, which means he does not have a permanent address. He's so speedy, so wildly, that mall workers long ago gave up trying to catch him. Bob can sneak into cracks and crevices like a trained rat. He lives well off the ends of hot dogs he pulls from the trash. For dessert, he laps up spilled lemonade and splattered ice cream cones. I've tried to share my food with Bob, but he's a picky eater and he prefers to hunt for himself. Bob is tiny, wiry, and fast, like a barking squirrel. He's nut-colored and big-eared. His tail moves like weeds in the wind, spiraling and dancing. And this is a picture of Bob. Bob's tail makes me dizzy and confused. It has meanings within meanings, like human words. I'm sad, it says. I'm happy, it says. I may be tiny, but my teeth are sharp. Gorillas don't have any use for tails. Our feelings are uncomplicated. Our rumps are unadored. Bob used to have three brothers and two sisters. Humans tossed them away on the freeway when they were a few weeks old. Bob rolled into a ditch. The others did not. His first night on the highway, Bob slept in the icy mud of the ditch. When he woke, he was so cold that his legs would not bend for an hour. The next night, Bob slept under some dirty hay near the Big Top Mall garbage bins. The following night, Bob found the spot in the corner of my domain where the glass is broken. I dreamed that I'd eaten a furry donut, and when I woke in the dark, I discovered a tiny puppy snoring on top of my belly. It had been so long since I felt the comfort of another's warmth that I wasn't sure what to do. Not that I had any visitors. I hadn't had any visitors. Mac had been in my domain, of course, and many other keepers. I'd seen my share of rats as it passed and the occasional wayward sparrow had fluttered in through a hole in my ceiling, but they never stayed long. I didn't move all night for fear of waking Bob. Once I asked Bob why he didn't want a home. Humans, I'd noticed, seemed to be irrationally fond of dogs, and I could see why a puppy would be easier to cuddle with than, say, a gorilla. Everywhere is my home, answered Bob. I'm a wild beast, my friend untamed and undaunted. I told Bob he could work in the shadows like Snickers, the poodle who rides Stella. Bob said Snickers sleeps on a pillow, pink pillow in Mac's office. He said she eats foul-smelling meat out of a can. He made a face. His lips curled, revealing tiny needles of teeth. Poodles, he said, are parasites. Mac gives me a fresh crayon, a yellow one, and ten pieces of paper. Time to earn your keep, Picasso, he says. I wonder who this Picasso is. Does he have a tire swing like me? Does he ever eat his crayons? I know I've lost my magic, so I try my very best. I clutch the crayon, and I think, I scan my domain. What is yellow? A banana? I draw a banana. The paper tears, but only a little. I lean back, and Mac picks up the drawing. Another day, another scribble, he says. One down, nine to go. What else is yellow, I think? I scan my domain. I draw another banana. And then I draw eight more. 
Three visitors are here, a woman, a boy, and a girl. I strut across my domain for them. I dangle from the tire swing. I eat three banana peels in a row. The boy spits at my window. The girl throws a handful of pebbles. Sometimes I'm glad the glass is there. After the show, the spit pebble children come back. I display my impressive teeth. I splash in my filthy pool. I grunt and I hoot. I eat and eat and eat some more. The children pound their pathetic chests. They toss more pebbles. Slimy little chimps, I mutter. I throw a meatball at them. Sometimes I wish the glass weren't there. I'm sorry I called those children slimy chimps. My mother would be ashamed of me. Like the spit pebble children, Julia is a child, but that, after all, is not her fault. While her father, George, cleans the mall each night, Julia sits by my domain. She could sit anywhere she wants, by the carousel, in the empty food court, on the bleachers located in sawdust. But I'm not bragging when I say that she always chooses to sit near me. I think it's because we both love to draw. Sarah, Julia's mother, used to help clean them all. But when she got sick and grew pale and stooped over, Sarah stopped coming. Every night, Julia offers to help George, and every night he firmly says, Homework, Julia. The floors will just get dirty again. Homework, I discovered, involves a sharp pencil and thick books and long sighs. I enjoy chewing pencils. I'm sure I would excel at homework. Sometimes Julia even dozes off, and sometimes she reads her books, but mostly she draws pictures and talks about her day. I don't know why people talk to me, but they often do. Perhaps it's because they think I can't understand them, or perhaps it's because I can't talk back. Julia likes science and art. She doesn't like Lila Burpee, who teases her because her clothes are old. And she does like Deshaun Williams, who teases her too, but in a nice way. And she would like to be a famous artist when she grows up. Sometimes Julia draws me. I'm an elegant fellow in her pictures, with my silver back gleaming like moon on moss. I never look angry the way I do on the fading billboard by the highway. I always look a bit sad, though. I love Julia's pictures of Bob. She draws him flying across the page, a blur of feet and fur. She draws him motionless, peeking out from behind a trash can or the soft hill of my belly. Sometimes in her drawings, Julia gives Bob's wings or a lion's mane. Once she even gave him a tortoise shell. But the best thing she ever gave him wasn't a drawing. Julia gave Bob his name. For a long time, no one knew what to call Bob. Now and then a mall walker or worker would try to approach him with a morsel of food. Here, doggy, they'd call, holding out a french fry. Come on, pooch, they'd say. How about a little piece of sandwich? But he would always vanish into the shadows before anyone could get too close. One afternoon, Julia decided to draw the little dog curled up in the corner of my domain. First, she watched him for a long time, chewing on her thumbnail. I could tell she was looking at him the way an artist looks at the world when she's trying to understand it. Finally, she grabbed her pencil and set to work. When she was finished, she held up the page. There he was, the tiny, big-eared dog. He was smart and cunning, but his gaze was wistful. Under the picture, there were three bold, confident marks circled in black. I was pretty certain it was a word, even though I couldn't read it. Julia's father peered over her shoulder. That's him exactly, he said, nodding. He pointed to the circle marks. I didn't realize his name was Bob, he said. Me either, said Julia. She smiled. I had to draw him first. Bob will not let humans touch him. He says their scent upsets his digestion. Every now and then, I see him sitting at Julia's feet. Her fingers move gently just behind his right ear. And there's a picture of Julia and Bob. I'm going to stop there. And I would like you tonight, after thinking about this story, to draw me a picture of a, an animal that you know or that's in your life and what his or her name is and what they look like to you. Now, she drew Bob in places that Bob lives, behind a trash can on Ivan's belly. Where does the animal that you love live? Does it live with you? Does it live with your grandparents? 
Maybe it's an animal that you know from your cousin's house. Draw me a picture of that pet animal. And then also I want you to draw a picture of what you think Ivan looks like in his domain. And maybe a picture of him when he's drawing. Think about that, and I'll see you tomorrow.